Great day yesterday. Solo home run. Sterling back. Nobody works harder for you. Solo blast here. Got it all, didn't he? He did not miss it. It was impressive power from Brad yesterday, as Andy had mentioned. Three multi-homer games for Brad, but this was the one I liked the most. A grand slam. And the Mariners needed it as the A's mounted a little bit of a comeback, but a grand slam for Brad Miller. And two home runs, five RBIs in the game. What an afternoon that Brad had yesterday. He's really played well since being called up here in Seattle. Double dose of Miller time yesterday. Got the grand slam first of his career. Thoughts on the 2013 season? Well, I was hoping for 500. I got my two front teeth. I was hoping for 500. Yeah. Didn't work out that way. You had a lot of crash and burns. And I think the turning point, at least for me, and I've heard other people say this, the Cleveland series. After winning two out of three in New York, go to Cleveland and get walked off three times. Killer. That, that was. That was a tough series for them. And they just didn't seem to be able to get any traction after that. I, I think about this year, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. There's no question about it. But Iwakuma season, what a year he had. Felix again being Felix. I thought that was great. We just showed you Brad Miller. Kyle Seeger taking another step forward. There are some positives in this, but I think overall everybody knows the Mariners have a lot of work to do over the winter. That they do. We're going to tee it up for the final time here today against the Oakland Athletics. They are playoff bound, and we're glad you're with us for game number 162 for the Mariners 2013 season. Let's enjoy it. Back with the first pitch. It's straight ahead. Game of the year, home game number 81. As we get you set for the final game of the year, who's your Mariners MVP? We asked you, the fan, at yesterday's fan pulse results. Look at that, number one, Raul Ibanez, followed by Kuma. Kyle Seeger got 10%, and Felix Hernandez only got 6%. I don't know if Felix has ever finished fourth in a team MVP contest, but that was what the deal was yesterday. Welcome out to the pen, Brad Adam, Bill Kruger. Dave Valley, and we're going to kind of continue on that theme. MVPs for the year. We talked about most improved. Now let's talk MVPs. Who's your MVP this year for the Mariners? Well, I think Raul's a great choice, a fantastic yeah. season, but I, I'm going to choose Asashi Urakuma. What an incredible season he had. 14 wins, 
Uh, third in the league in ERA and innings pitched. Uh, second in whip. This guy was fantastic. 33 starts, eight times. Three runs or less, six innings or more. He could have won 20 easy. Easy. All right, that's the pitcher taking a pitcher. How about you, Mr. Val? Great choice in Asashi Iwakuma, but I still always have a hard time picking a pitcher for a most valuable player. So I'm going to go with Kyle Siggy. He was my most improved player, but he's also my MVP of this ball club. I thought he was the most consistent offensive player from day one to day 162 here today. 220, 220 home run seasons in a row. This guy continues to make great strides. I think he's going to be the heart and soul of this lineup for many years to come. My MVP, in case you guys were wondering, nobody asked, <laughs> but mine, guys, I'm going to go with Bill Kuma because I've learned that when I sit next to Bill Kruger, he knows a lot more than I do, and I just want to keep the peace between us. Hey, yeah, right. I get on the screen. Look at that, yeah. Most in innings, most wins, everything that Bill just said about Kuma. <laughs> I like that. And he was an ditto, all-star. Like, just say ditto. Just boom. Ditto. I like it. All right, guys. Enjoyed our final pregame. Look forward to postgame. Who knows what we've got in store for you. Well, I know we got first pitch in store for the final time. That's next with Dave and Mike. Enjoy the final game of the year. We'll see you after for postgame. Mariner fans getting their final taste of baseball here in 2013. Good to see them here at Safe Go Field with the roof covering us here at the ballpark as we get ready for game number 162. It's the Mariners and the Athletics. Glad you joined us for Mariner Baseball. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, the Root Sports Crew, Rasmo Ramirez will be facing off against Sonny Gray. And right now, let's take a look at the lineup for the two time defending champion Athletics. And for manager Bob Melvin, leading off, it will be Chris Young. Young with a double in last night's game. And then it's Smith, Josh Donaldson. See what he's done in September. He has been a hot hitter at 337 average for him, five home runs, 16 RBIs. Brandon Moss has also hit a couple of home runs in this series. He was a DH hitting cleanup. Kiespo, Reddick, Norris, Barton, and Sogard rounding out the nine for the Athletics. Or Ramirez on the year. Five game winner, five and two record, 4.56 ERA. ERA keeps going down for him. That's a good sign. 71 innings pitch, 54 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 270 against Ramirez. 
And today's defense brought to you by T-Mobile. In the outfield, Ibanez in left. Dustin Ackley getting the start in center field. Michael Saunders will be out in right. And on the infield, Kyle Seeger. Sure, he's going to play the last day of the season. Played almost every game at third this year. Miller and Franklin up the middle. Justin Smoke is at first. And Mike Zanino will do the catching. Well, here we go. Rama Rosmo Ramirez pitched to Chris Young. That's what he did in his last start against the Angels. Pitched well, six innings, six hits, did not give up an earned run in that one. 93 pitches for Ramirez. I would assume he'll be around the same here. Down the line, that is a foul ball. Chris Young jumping on the first pitch. Umpires for today's game, Marvin Hudson has balls and strikes today. Jerry Lane's at first, Hunter Wendelstadt at second, and Alan Porter's at third. 56 degrees here in Seattle. Winds are calm. And those of us up here in the Pacific Northwest know all about the rain over the last couple of three days. It's torrential to say the least. Down low to Chris Young. Entered last night's game as a pinch hitter. Struck out looking. Also picked up the double and a stolen base. For Ramirez, his fastball typically be between 91 and 94 miles an hour. He can top out at 95 at times. He'll throw a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. Up and in. A lot of home runs for a guy hitting the buck 99. It really is. But that's what he's done his, own, his entire career when he's had the opportunities to play. He's been a guy average wise that's been up and down for him throughout his career, but he typically has good power numbers. He had some big home run years when he was in Arizona. Full count. Chris Young leading off the ball game. Pitch from Ramirez. Fouled off. Oh, no, it he didn't foul it off. It went off his Indianos glove. He didn't but, realize yeah. it. Yeah. He was headed back, headed back to the dugout. So a strikeout. Fastball up and away, and Mike just missed it. You can see him put his glove right up in front of his face, lost eyesight of the ball, and ended up going over towards the backstop. Covered quickly, though, so that'll be a strikeout for Ramirez. Here's Seth Smith. Playing in left field today. Does it feel like a scout sometimes? You're not surprised. You know, he watches guys long enough, even the opponents. Oh, yeah. And, and he, you know, he's hacking first pitch if it's close. We've seen him. Mariners obviously is known from his days in Colorado when he was mostly a pinch here. There's a good pitch. Nice changeup from Ramirez. But he wants to be aggressive early in the count on the fastball. It doesn't mean that you can't throw him a fastball, but you better locate it. Keep it down, keep it on the edges of the plate. Smith started last night's game and was lifted for a pinch hitter. Round out and walk. in spring training open he was going to be available from day one fouled off organization quite high on him he didn't get his first start till July 11th he's, a, he's another one of the starters the young starters for the Mariners where repeating his mechanics is important Eats up smoke into the corner. Smith putting in the high gear. Now he slams on the brakes. 
coach Seth Smith turned it up as he was coming into second. Then he picked up Mike Gallego, the third base coach, and he slammed on the brakes. The double is 26. And it looked like it's a changeup. Zanino wants that pitch down, but it runs right in the middle of the plate, belt high, and he rips it past Smoke, who tried to make the backhanded play. And by that time, he gets down into the corner. Michael Saunders did a good job getting in it quickly to hold him to a double. Here's the all-star third baseman, Josh Donaldson. Show for three couple of walks yesterday. It's not been a good series for him, as you can see. 0 for 8. Dropped out of the top 10 in hitting. Still seventh and on base, ninth in slugging. Marners in scoring position, batting average is ninth, 336. I wonder if his batting average, if it gets to an even 300, to Bob Melvin will take him out of the game. Good point. That's a nice number on the card, isn't it, it? It is. It really is. And when you've been there all year and you lose it on the last oh, day, that's something. So no. I'm sure Bob is aware of all those things, and he'll keep that in mind. The A's obviously going to the postseason, and Donaldson will be a big part of that. Stop by Zanino. Bob Melvin, manager of the year last year. Back-to-back -back division titles. One thing we've learned that when we get to the midway, we, I guess we get to the half mile pole next year. Start looking for these guys. It's, it's really been amazing to see what they have done in the second half of the last few years, and especially in August and September. They just they play extremely well. They get it going. And of course, they lean on that young, talented pitching that they have. Good bullpen, too. Yeah, great bullpen. Two and two here to Donaldson. One out runner at second. On a full count. On deck, Brandon Moss. What a year he's had. 30 home runs on the air for Brandon Moss. It is 30th yesterday. Off here to Donaldson. Uh, gets foul. Three and two. One out, runner at second. And we've seen this throughout the series and really the year. Oakland Athletics, they will get your pitch count up on you. They foul a lot of pitches off. They're a patient club. This next pitch will be the eighth pitch, and this is bad to Donaldson. Seth Smith, 26 double. He's in second after Chris Young led off by striking out. Ramirez making his fourth career appearance, third start against the A's. First appearance this year, 0 and 1 and 3 outings, couple starts, lifetime. Tough loss, June 25th of last year, 1 nothing. Eight innings, really good work. Struck out 10. That's off the plate for ball four. He's now from 20 pitches in the inning, has just the one out. So when you look at Ramirez, Mauer, Felix, Rocky first innings. And we're going to get a pinch runner. Weeks is coming on to run for Donaldson. So Good Bob call. Melvin, yeah, he just he just wants to get these guys a chance to see some pitches and he'll get the regulars out of the game. So Josh Venice is at 3 0 1. Yeah. For him. Brings up Brandon Moss, sixth in slugging. And 
tied for seventh in home runs with 30. Tied with David Ortiz. Two run homer in the seventh yesterday. And a three run shot Friday night, first inning. Two strikes. Next pitch will be 25 for Ramirez. He could really use the double play ball and get out of this inning. Ball and two strikes. A couple of men on here for the A's in a first inning. And another guy just fouling oh. off pitches. Yeah. Two pitch up high. Just the fourth batter, Ramirez, really having to work. Joe Saunders, Brandon Maurer comes away with a victory yesterday, Taiwan Walker. Two and two. It's a prerequisite, isn't it? It's another header. This is going to be the eighth pitch in this at bat to him. So Ramirez having a tough time of it. They can't quite get to him and he can't put him away. Two balls, two strikes. Wow. Brandon Moss in his second season with Oakland, 21 homers, 52 runs batted in. Best year in the big leagues has been with Boston, Pittsburgh, Philly, and now year two, with the A's. Ninth pitch coming up. Pulled the string on it, strikes him out in a big one. It's just a well located change up. Good movement on it, runs off the outside corner. Moss out in front of it. 80 miles an hour on that change up. That's a good look for him. McDonald's Super Bowl. You can see how far out in front of the change up he was. Fouls one into Zanino's glove. I asked about two for seven here in the series. One. Thirty 
one pitch. Wow. Fifth hitter. Sharp today, plus the foul balls. Yeah, a lot of foul balls. One strike. Three and one. It is a struggle here today for Mr. Ramirez in the first inning in his 13th start. Base is loaded for Josh Reddick. Two strikeouts, two walks, and a double here in the first. Carl Willis, quick trip out to the mound. I think more than anything, just to give Ramirez a little bit of a break. He's thrown 34 pitches here in the first inning. Carl's going to try to get him back with his mechanics again. He has a tendency to fall off the left side of the mound. He'll almost jump at the hitter and spin off of the mound. That's typically when they'll leave the ball up and away to the lefties and we've seen that quite a bit. Brings up Josh Reddick. Base is loaded for Josh. Two outs here in the first. Two for eight on the series. Inside, boys fight himself now. Hey, he's, he is not sharp at all. Out of the 35 pitches, 20 strikes, 15 balls. Reddick six for 18 on this road trip. Foul ball. One for six with the bases filled. Knocked in five. And he finally has himself in a good count. See if he can put him away. A couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts in the inning. Closing in on 40 pitches for the first inning. Not what he had in mind for the finale. One and two. Well, he like took a good piece out of his shoulder, maybe. We forget sometimes when the pitcher's out there struggling, like Ramirez is. He's the one that has to sit back there, and all those foul balls, a lot of them are getting a piece of him. This one looks like it makes pretty solid contact. Gets right over the glove and hits him up right there on the bicep. Ball and two strikes, two outs, and the base is loaded. It's to Reddick. Swing and a miss. He got him. He survived it. 39 pitches. Nothing across for the Athletics. Mariners coming to bat.
Davis will swing the bats against Sonny Gray. Let's take a look at that batting order. And leading off for the Mariners this afternoon, Brad Miller. A couple of home runs, including a grand slam yesterday. He will lead off in his Franklin Seager Morales. Raul Labanez, 29 home runs for 2013. Tied with Ted Williams, most by a 41-year-old. He will hit fifth. Hopefully, he'll get that 30th home run today. Then it's Smoke, Saunders, and Eno and Ackley. Rounding out the nine for the Mariners and for Sonny Gray. A 4-3 record, a 2.90 ERA. Only 59 innings pitch, 59 strikeouts for him. Opponents hitting just 218. Good fastball. He'll be in the low 90s. His best pitch is his curveball. He will throw it at any time. It's a big 12-6 curveball. That's his pitch. An occasional changeup. Big cheer. Seahawks just kicked the field goal to win the ball game at Houston. They go 4-0. First time in franchise history. So they beat beat the Texans in Houston and rallied to do it. Congratulations. Brad Miller to the gap. That's a base hit. His grandmother Charlotte down in the greater Orlando area is thrilled. She was particularly happy with the two home runs and a grand slam yesterday. We want to welcome those of you who just watched the Seahawk game. Here's the reaction in the pen after the uh, game winning field goal in overtime in Houston. Hey now, there you go. 4 0 for the Seahawks. And Mike. I have the pleasure of calling the Seahawks game next week in Indianapolis you on will. Westwood One Radio. We'll Looking be listening to for you. They will definitely be listening for you. What sure. a great comeback for him today. Richard Sherman had a pick six to get him back in the game. Solid base hit for Brad Miller to get things started. Line drive into center field. Nick Franklin. Step in. Good for the Hawks. 4 0. That's going to be a great game. I'll see them next week in Indy. Indy beats Jacksonville 37 to 3. This afternoon. Mount Weeks at second base. Alberto Callespo is the third baseman. A lot of conversation with the athletics on who is going to be in their rotation. And some think that Sonny Gray may be one of them, even though he's only pitched 59 innings for him this year. He's pitched extremely well, and it sounds like Bob Melvin may find a way to put him in. The rotation for the playoffs. We saw him once for seven innings as he strikes out Franklin looking. He was impressive when we saw him back on August 20th at the Coliseum. That is that pitch. It's the curveball. He has a good one. T-Mobile defense for the athletics. In the outfield, Seth Smith in left. Young getting the start in center. Coco Chris the afternoon off. Reddick in right. And on the infield, Cayespo now. He's moved from second over to third. Sogard is the shortstop. Jamile Weeks. Is at second, Barton at first, and Derek Norris will do the catching. Here's Kyle Seeger. Great campaign for Kyle. You think uh, playing every day he caught up to him in this last, because he was up around 300 not that long ago, and he starts today at 260. This is game number 164. Yeah, I think there, there's something to that, and, and you and I both know. I mean, he, Kyle gets to the ballpark early. A lot of extra work for him this year, and I think he's still trying to figure out this full season. Remember, this is only his second full year. Bouncing ball finds the hole. Base hit. Miller will hold at second. Not going to run on Reddick. He's got one of the best arms in the business. Good solid base hit by Kyle. That should keep him up over the 260 mark for the year. Good look at our McDonald's Super Bowl. Brings up Kendris Morales, Mariners leading hitter 279, leads the club in hits, total bases, doubles, RBIs. Hitting with runners in scoring position. How about that? It's I been mean, solid. 23 home runs, second on the ball club. He has put up a nice year. His vet veteran presence and productivity, he, along with Raul Lapine, has meant the world to this team. There's Raul sitting on 29 home runs, 300 for his career. Slice the other way. Left fielder Smith coming on. Hunters will get back. Kids, a, 
Fans Appreciation Day here. Youngster getting a chance to work with Tom Hutler. That's easily the favorite part of his uh, of his little stint there, right? I would say so. Did a good job with Raw. All right. Chance to get on TV. Tied with the great Ted Williams, 29 home runs as a 41 year old. He would stand alone if he could get one here today. Last home run at the Angels eight days ago. It's an impressive list. Good list. We're all moving past all of those gentlemen except for Ted Williams, who he's tied with. Five Hall of Famers on that list. Two and one. Two one pitch to Bunyas. Two on two out. Bouncing ball to the second baseman Wiggs backhands double clutch throws and gets it. That'll do it. Mariners have done in the first. He had a crazy no hitter in Miami. We're going to show you the highlights when we come back. And Henderson Alvarez, a Felix Hernandez protege, he's on deck. He's already thrown nine no-hit innings. Look at this. Brian Pena can't control that curveball. Giancarlo Stanton scores to win it one nothing, and a no-hitter. It's in the books. Henderson Alvarez of the Miami Marlins throws a no-hitter this afternoon. How about that, on that the last is, day of the season. On a, on a wild pitch. And he was on deck. And he's on deck. <laughs> Eric Milton did it against the A's, who pretty much ran out of triple A lineup. The Angels, rather, ran out of triple A lineup a few years ago. For no hitter. See if Ramirez can get back on track. He threw 39 pitches. Against six hitters, left the bases loaded. He was able to strike out Josh Reddick. This is Derek Norris. He's behind here, three and zero. Oh. And again, congratulations to the Seahawks. They go four and zero oh for the first time in their history. Twenty-three twenty win at Texas at the Texans. Have another very difficult road game next week at Indianapolis. 
Three one. Ripped down the line. Foul ball. Ramirez has been fortunate so far. He he hasn't had good command. He's falling behind hitters and the athletics just haven't been able to catch up to him yet, but that will happen. So he's going to have to figure things out, start throwing more first pitch strikes and working ahead of these guys. Three and two to Norris. Almost hit it. Man, he does not have a feel today. That's a third walk already, and that's just the seventh hitter. Take a look at it. Three two. He's just trying to throw a fastball right down the middle. Dropping his elbow getting underneath it, and that ball takes off. Trying to give Norris a shave right there. Brings up Derek Barton the first baseman. That's inside. Ball one. Derek Barton his second stint with the ball club this year. Caught up from Triple A Sacramento. Boy, oh boy. His GPS is way off. Yeah, he just and he looks at and you can see it in his face. He's confused, can't figure out why he can't throw the ball where he wants to. But he's not going to be around long if he doesn't Ooh. figure it out. 47 pitches with nobody out in the second inning. Not a good sign. 2 0. Oh. Struggles and some good swings and a lot of foul pitches. Still a scoreless ball game. It's a strange looking scorecard so far. He has three walks, but he also has three strikeouts. Two and one. He aimed that one three and one. Eric Sogard waiting on deck, number nine hitter for the Athletics. With a strike, full count. Three two pitch. Wow. Back to back walks. This is not fun. Fourth walk already. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Another visit by Carl Willis getting some frequent flyer work here. Hey, fans, a reminder to catch all the action of the 2013 Major League Baseball postseason on Fox, TBS, and MLB Network. It all starts October 1st. Career high in walks. Four. It's a third time Ramirez has done it. Last time was on the 8th of this month against Tampa Bay and a no decision. Carl's trying to give him some sort of help, but he looks like his confidence is done. Is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. his body language and the way yeah. there's Hector Nowesi getting yeah. loose in the pen. Yeah. You know, 51 pitches, still nobody out here in the second inning, as you mentioned, four walks. And as the audition for the next uh, manager slash coaching staff, this is not what he uh, wanted to leave an impression. How he wanted to leave an impression. He's coming off of a solid outing against the Angels. He went six innings, gave up six hits, no earned runs in that one through 93 pitches. That's the thing that's so strange about it, right? Strike one, Eric Sogard, the ninth hitter. Nine hole hitter, the shortstop. Squibber 
Miller. Blues and Mount Runners move up. Back to the runners in scoring position here for Chris Young, a free swinger. Back to the top of the lineup, Chris Young, same. Talking about Seth Smith earlier, Young is no different. He wants to hit the fastball early in the count. Did strike out his first time up, and he will do that. He'll swing and miss. So he doesn't want to take a lot of pitches. Not sightseeing, that's for sure. Particularly in game 162, his team already in the playoffs. Fouls it off. It was the fastest 162 game he ever played in. <laughs> with, and especially if there was, you know, with nothing on the line. Oh, gosh. Well, I would say that the tendency is for the guys to be a little more aggressive. He so you would think it would go. He understated, underlined in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're on the road, you got to get home, you got to pack. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's already been a long year for a <laughs> lot of these guys. Right. Up the middle, base hit. That'll get two. It's inevitable the two walks come back to haunt them. They caught up to them. Two nothing A's. Two RBIs for Young takes him to 40. Well, it's just going to be a matter of time, and a good job pulling his hands back in. That ball running in on his hands hits it right back over his head. Athletics now one for four with runners in scoring position. Curtis just looked it up. 96 in Oakland. Mariners A. Solomon Torres on the mound. Want to guess what the TOG was the time of game? 218. 200. Really? Boys were like, buses, bussy, warm it up. Here's Seth Smith. Long drive to the gap. Base of the fence. Young flying. Getting the wave on. He's at third. Miller's throw. Not in time. RBI double Seth Smith. Seth Smith having a day in two at bats, two doubles, and he knocks in a run. And Eric Wedge has seen enough. So short work for Rasmo Ramirez. He just flat did not have it today. Back with more right after this. How it affects Tampa Bay. What did they do at Rogers Center in Toronto? Fernando Rodney on the mound line drive to left field. 
Rays win it 7 6. They were up 7 0 in that ball game. They hold on. And here's how the scoreboard looks. So the Rays win top nine. The Tribe winning at Minnesota. Rangers and Angels tied at 2 2. <laughs> Mike Trout one for two with a homer already. Yep, so the Rangers have to win. They want to stay tied with the Rays. Cleveland wins. They're obviously going to be in as a wild card team, but it's on the Rangers now in that 2 2 game in the sixth. Sure is. Here's the standing right now. Indians. Have game lead. Rangers have got to win. Force a playoff. Things are going to really get interesting. In that situation, as they get into the playoffs, Hector Nuesi takes over. He's got Jamal Weeks here. Weeks came on a pinch run for Josh Donaldson. He walked in the first inning. Bob Melvin takes Donaldson as all star short. That's the third baseman out of the game to keep him at 301 for the season. A very good number. From Noesi. Noesi picking up where Ramirez left off. Seth Smith with his second double of the day picked up an RBI just a few minutes ago. First strike, two and one. Weeks ranks second in the Pacific Coast League with 80 walks, 96 runs scored, tied for third triples with 10. And 284 against right handed pitching, compared to 226 against left handers. 2 1. Let's see, back in it now, 2 and 2. And for Hector, only pitched in 11 games this year, a 592 ERA, just 24 and a third, 19 strikeouts, 11 walks. My opponent's average at 358. Look out. Ty Waller side coming and get out of the way. Throw down to the smoke and Weeks is done. Ty making Jamal carry his own weapon reset. Still back. quick. Hey Ty's got good man. <laughs> good baseball man. Two outs. Les is going to have to be careful here. Brendan Moss, long at bat against Ramirez. Nine pitch at bat. And throwing a lot of fastballs and starting to find the strike zone. That's good to see. So far, six pitches, five of them fastballs. Swing by Moss. We'll take a look at the line for Ramirez. It's not a good one for him. One and a third, three hits, three runs. All of them are four walks. That was the killer. Three strikeouts, 56 pitches. Won 33 of those were strikes, and he is responsible for Seth Smith out at second base. Down low, one and two. Yesterday time Brandon Moss up a few times on some pitches on the inside corner. Fortunately one of them ran out over the plate and he ended out for a home run. Outside two and two. Three change ups in a row. Brandon Bauer Taiwan Walker. Interesting watching them in spring training next February and March.
That is a fair ball. Seth Smith will score easily. And Moss will get an RBI double. 23rd double for Moss with 87th RBI. Close the books on Ramirez now. Four runs, all of them earned for Ramirez as he hits this ball right down the line. Looks like he goes over the bag. Gary Lane, veteran umpire, calls a fair right away. Bring up Alberto Cayespo. Cayespo walked his first time. Espo in the five hole today. Looks like strike one. Strike two to Cayespo. Seeing that double from Moss has been one of the things that has plagued Noessi. Gets ahead of hitters and then ends up making a mistake in the middle of the plate. One and two. Pressure and the Rangers playing at home, knowing they mm -hmm. absolutely positively have to win, must be immense. Don't tell me you're not scoreboard watching. They are watching, and they <laughs> oh, saw oh. that posted by the Rays that win. Sure, a lot of shoulders were sunk on that one, slumped. Kiaspo is the eighth man to swing the bat here in the second inning. And the Rangers also had a little wind out of their sail too when they saw that Tampa put a six up in the first inning in Toronto. And that was two hours before the Rangers teed it up. Well, I guess the good news is you know what you have to do, right? <laughs> Boys, it's right in front of you. Two two pitch here to Kiaspo, man at second. And that should put an end to it. As Miller will take care of it. Four runs on three hits and a man left for the A's. Open it up a 4 nothing lead. The National League playoff situation is set. We'll show that to you when we come back. On the second inning, let's get you up to speed on what's happening in the National League. It's all set for the playoffs. Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the winner of that one takes on the Cardinals, the Dodgers, and Atlanta in the other division series. It's 
friends in Pittsburgh, they'll be thrilled to see uh, a home playoff game. And I'm bad. It's been 21 years. 1992, I believe it is. Well, that's a long time between drinks of water. Let me tell you. Well, they, along with getting into the postseason, I, I think they have a fun team to watch. They have a lot of speed on that club. They can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Look, the, the grilly kid is back at closer too. He came back a couple of weeks ago, missing time. The rest of the bullpen is not bad. McCutcheon's a legit big time all star. I like guy. Marte. Marte and uh, Alvarez at third base hitting a lot of home runs. Good team. And then uh, Marlon Bird, we talked He'll about. He'll help him them yesterday. in the postseason. Yeah. It's good to have that veteran in there. And Marlon's been around coming off with a good year. I think he's had 24 home runs. Yeah, this hit year. one yesterday. There's smoke. Thousand off. College here in Pittsburgh in '71 when they won the World Series, and that was, of course, that was many in that crew. Good team. Steve Blass won, I think, three games in here. It's in the broadcast booth. He did go. Smoke's gone. One out here in the second. Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Today's the finale of the season here and the wild card, the NL wild card tilt on Tuesday, Wednesday for the American League, and then the division series gets going Thursday and Friday. Michael Saunders going to step in. Be interesting to see what he's going to do coming into spring training next year, what his role will be. For a lot of guys, really. Jackson Renzi, big job in front of him. See uh, if he makes any trades, who he trades, and what what he brings back. We're talking about the last day of the season. That's another one of the things too. I think you have a year where your club has struggled. A lot of guys walking out of the doors today with a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Unknowns. Coaching staff too. They're all on a year remaining on their deal, but that's not a guarantee they'll be back. Three and one. He will be behind the plate next year. Zanino. Closing. Get together with the media pregame meeting, which continued saying a lot of great things. He says he's as good a catcher as I've ever been around, and that includes when I was a player. A guy like Brad Osmus played with John Flaherty, Joe Girardi, guys who all played for a long time. So he's got the backbone, the strength, he's got some edge. He said he's like Victor Martinez. When he loses it, he takes it personally. Chapter to the shortstop, Sogard. Goes out Saunders. Quick two outs here in the second. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, and Windows Phone 8. At bat's going to deliver Mariner baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, highlights, and more. So text it back to 31826. Visit Mariners.com for details. Great way to keep up with the playoffs coming up this week. Here's Zanino. Breaking ball missed from Sonny Gray. Ball one. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think Mike Zanino, he, he has a 20 home run year in his future. Shown some power this year, five home runs. I think a big part of that, too, with the, on his offense, is he, he'll be more comfortable next year behind the plate. He had a lot on. His plate when he went back there to take over this pitching staff and, and learn everybody and learn the league. There's a lot to it. And I think next year he'll be more comfortable with that. And I think we'll see his offensive numbers pick up. Spring training with the staff into the season as opposed to joining when he did what was it midway? Yeah, what, what? maybe a little later than that. Yeah. So it's yeah. You know, so all yeah, all of those things I, I think. Even though, you know, he was here, probably sooner than the organization wanted him to be. I think that it's in the end it's going to be a positive for him. He certainly can handle it. One hop down to Kiasco. 
And the Mariners are done in the second. Give you an update on what's happening in the American League wildcard story when we get back here to Safeco Field where the A's lead it 4 0. Day. Good to have a nice gathering here at the ballpark this afternoon. Josh Reddick to lead it off against Hector Noesi. Game one in relief of starter Rasmo Ramirez, who went an inning and a third, three hits, four runs all earned. And Barton six, seven, and eight. Reddick has had a tough year. Had a big year last year, over 30 home runs for Reddick, and he's had a tough year this year. Bob Melvin has stayed with him. Seems like he's just one of those guys. Might be a sleeper in the playoffs. Have a big playoff. I could see that. You know, yeah. Everybody's going to be looking at Moss and Donaldson, Cespedes when he gets back in the lineup. It may be Reddick that that sneaks up on some people. Plus plus defender out in right. Yes, field. he is that. To Arlington, Texas. The Angels had just tied it in the top of the sixth. And Giovanni Soto's at the plate. Adrian Beltre's on base. And he shoots one to the right center field gap. And Beltre will limp around. You're going to watch him grab a hamstring right here. But he scores in Texas with a 3 2 lead. Indians have won, so there's, it's clear cut. Rangers have got to win. To get into a playoff with Tampa. That to establish the second wild card team. There's Derek Norris walked and scored back in the second. I hope the Rangers win. I'd just like to see the game. Myself. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. It'll be fun. One game playoff if the Rangers can win. Boy. It's the opening salvo in the playoffs and the drama is going to be tight and tense. If the Rangers win, here's what you have. Tampa will have to travel to Texas and play that one game. Then the winner will have to play at Cleveland. That's some work. Yeah. And of course, whoever ends up coming out of the wild card will go to Boston. So.
Do you like the, the one game playoff in the wild card? Yeah, no, I like it. I, I didn't think I would like the two wild cards. I love it. And to set it up like this, keep the interest high. And let's face it, foot, if football takes over in, in a lot of respects in uh, in September, but this takes a lot of the, not a lot, but it takes some thunder away from it. And particularly in the participating cities. Well, and I, I think the thing that, that we've seen this year that I like about it too is that because it's so difficult, and you can see if the Rangers win, the road to try to get to the World Series is going to be difficult Ooh. for those wild card teams. But on the flip side of that, I think it, it, it puts a real emphasis on winning your division, and and you should have an advantage if you go through 162 games you and, and you win your division. So I like it. Seeger takes care of this. Throws out Norris, two down. Same time and money riding Sounder from Lakewood and South Tacoma to Seattle for schedules. Visit soundtransit.org. Unless he gets a quick two outs in the third, he'll face Derek Barton. And scored second inning. Norris and Barton walked and out to Sogard. Then a two run single by Chris Young. Seth Smith with an RBI double and then later an RBI double by Moss. Four runs on the board in second for Oakland. Oh, and two to Barton. Two pitch. Ball two. Well, Hector's throwing the ball well since he's come out of the pen. 30 pitches, 19 strikes. First pitch strikes to five out of the six batters he has faced. And he's using all of his pitches. A lot of fastballs, but he's mixing in his split and his slider. Oh. Nicely done. He reached behind. No Nice and easy. And hey, work on it every day. Nice done. Nicely done there by Hector Noesi. One, two, three, third inning for the Athletics to lead for nothing. Play. How about Hector Noesi on this broken bat comebacker off the bat of Derek Bart ball and bat coming his way. Yeah, then the no look reach behind him <laughs> and a clean pick and he was cool about it too. Yeah, nice like Spider-Man down there. Yeah. 
Dustin Hackley, number nine hitter today, will lead off the bottom of the third inning. Side from Sonny Gray, two balls, one strike to Ackley, followed by Miller and Franklin, nine, one, and two in the order. Ah. Two and two to Ackley. Miller's on deck, got a base hit to open up the ball game for the Mariners. Great sign. Strike three called. Ackley thought he had a free pass. He's gone. One out. Check out our fan pulse for today. Who will win the American League pennant? The Baston Red Sox, the Oakland Athletics. Detroit Tigers or a wild card team. You know, that's a very good question. Uh, something to discuss. Who's going to win the American League pennant? I, I think I, I hate doing this, but I think I'm going to have to ride with Boston. How about you? Originally, I, I like the Tigers this year, but their bullpen has right? been so shaky. I don't, I don't feel that good about it. I, so I, I think, I think I, I think I would probably go with Boston. Also, another base hit for Brad Miller. Brad now two for two. Finish up strong for the young man. Here's a Boston notes. Look at this: first in runs, slugging second in average, opponents average fourth, and team ERA sixth. The big one's the bottom line. Yeah, all buddy. build advantage throughout the playoffs and all these clubs that have been to Fenway, they know that can be difficult. Junior Harris had a great year as a closer. Yeah. Really good pitching. Really good combination. Here's Nick Franklin. They go for one with a strikeout. Strike out in the first inning. Struck out looking at a curveball. Breaking ball for a strike. Forty percent of the fans riding with the Red Sox in our fan pulse. Your David Ortiz had again, just quietly 30 home runs. You know, yep. just goes about his business. Here for the Red Sox. Big full badly there, strikes out. Two down. Fourth strikeout. Late last night, Major League Baseball set another strikeout record: 36,448. Six consecutive years. The new mark. Mm. We say it all the time. So many arms, guys throwing 95 plus. More and more difficult for the hitters, especially with the bullpens. Seager base hit to right his first time. Home runs last year, 22 home runs this year. Batting average up around 10 points from last year, so some improvement for Kyle.
3 0 here to see. Wallace on deck. Ready at 3 0 pitch to Seeger Miller at first. Four pitch walk. First walk issued by Gray. Mariners in business here with two outs, a couple of men aboard. How about the Athletics, their profile. Third and runs, third and homers, slugging fourth. Team ERA, there you go, 3 5 8, second only to Kansas City. Well, it's batting average. Second, good numbers. Not a great fielding team, but. They get it done. Uh, they'll hope that that doesn't show up. Those extra outs in the postseason can really cost you. But again, a good pitching staff for them. Two strikeouts, a base hit, and a walk in this inning for the Mariners. Mariners over two with runners in scoring position. Morales his first time up. Fly out to left. Two hold, two out, two on. Sonny Grail, another in a long list of really good arm, young arms for the Athletics. Well, he has he has a good fastball. His fastball is at 94 miles an hour, but his curveball is one of the better ones, and he will throw it at any time. Came into the game with an ERA of 2.90. He's pitched well for the Athletics, and again, he may make their playoff rotation with the way that he has pitched. That's a bad change up now. Two two. Three hits for the Mariners. Brad Miller's got two of them. The other one, Kyle Seeger. Couldn't get that bender over, so the counters run full. Raul Abanez is on deck. We're all looking for home run number 30. Only that home runs for him this year. Great first half. 24 home runs by the break. Three two to Morales. Breaking ball. And they're loaded up for Raul. Back to back walk. Sonny Gray trying to help the Mariners out. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, going to make a trip to the mound. As Raul walks up to home plate. This would be a good time to do it, huh? 30th home run, make it a grand slam. Why not? I like the way the author is writing this. Let's see if it can be paid off. Final day of the season. We're all sitting on 29 home runs. Top the list. Most home runs by a 41 year old tied with Ted Williams. First pitch. Ball one. Gray started off okay. A strikeout looking with base hit and strikeout, but now back to back walks have him loaded. 
retired six in a row. And then the base hit by Miller. Now the struggles. A couple of walks. Owls got one grand slam on his tote board this season. Ready. Here comes a 1 1. Oh, Raul had good intentions on that. Missed 1 and 2. It's the best fastball from Gray so far. 95 miles an hour. Raul helped him out a little bit. Look like that pitch was down. Set up inside. Yep, just below the knees. Two outs, a ball and two strikes with the bases loaded. 4 0 A's. Struck him out. That'll do it. Mariners leave him loaded. Sonny Gray strikes out the side. 4 0 lead. Baseball fan from Alaska, and I watch all my Seattle Mariners games on Root Sports with MTA from Squinta to Eagle River. Go Mariners! From an Anchorage suburb, good to have her on hand here today. Good stuff. Mariners ground crew, Bob Gustafsson and company, doing their last dance number of the season. Well received here at Safeco Field. Hector Nuesi continues. Here in the fourth, he's got Sogard, Young, and Smith, 9 1 and 2. Big four run second inning by the Athletics. Exactly drifts back. Makes the catch. Century Link linked to what's next. ALCS begins on the 12th, the World Series on the 23rd season opener, 2014. It's the Angels down there in Anaheim, the home opener. Here against the Angels on April 8th. Curious to see what's going to happen personnel wise between now and then. Chris Young strike out the two run single. Just joining us, Rasmo Ramirez, shaky start. Got out of a bases loaded first inning situation throwing 39 pitches, but it caught up to him in the second. This guy at the center field. Well, through an inning and a third, Ramirez threw 58 pitches, so he really struggled. Had four walks. The Westy though has come out of the bullpen and thrown the ball well. He's another guy. I think he's somebody that can help your club. Put him out in the bullpen. He can maybe be your long guy. He seems, Dave, from us watching him over the last few years. He seems to be more comfortable or at least pitches better more aggressive out of the bullpen than when he was in the starting rotation. I'm sure he'd rather be a starter but he's somebody that you can have out there. Maybe he'll spot start here and there when you have a guy down. Anytime you talk to coaching staff. 
Love his arm. Oh, What's not to love? It's a great arm. But it's an easy 95. The, right. There's always the butt though. Where yeah. he's, you know, comma, but, comma. He's in trouble when he gets ahead, as you mentioned earlier, gets ahead, then he starts nibbling. Sometimes you wonder where that killer instinct is. And he's showing it here today. Well, we, again, I, I don't know if it's and, and pitchers they're different that way, but sometimes when they come out of the pen, they don't feel that they have to try to pace themselves to get through six, seven, eight innings. They come in and just cut it loose, go right after guys. And you know, however long they can go. But I think he's somebody as a long guy out of your pen. He can do a good job for you. Charlie Furbush has found himself a nice roll in the back of that bullpen. He's a former starter. And Hector throws a one, two, three inning. He's retired three, six, seven in a row now. It's a good roll for him. Now he got to get some runs. Four nothing A's. Sports being brought to you by Ford. We are local. By Safeco Insurance. Do more. And by the Emerald Queen Casino. Where it's hammer time with MC Hammer November 23rd. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. An appreciation weekend here at Safeco Field in Seattle. 4 0. Athletics on top here. See if the Mariners can get cranking. Second time, Justin Smoke will be leading off the inning. September storm on record heading towards Seattle. That's not good. And they're talking about an explosive development off the coast. Curtis relays to me. Smoke struck out on a one two pitch first time. Michael Choice, the new center fielder, take the place of Chris Young. Joe Madden is doing to entertain the troops as they sit in the clubhouse in Toronto trying to figure out where they're going to end up going as they watch the Rangers game. I'm sure Joe came up with something. Something novel. What was that like sitting uh, sitting through that 95 in Dallas? Oh, that was a strange deal. We played our game in Dallas and we had to wait for Oakland and, and the Angels who we were running down to play finish playing their game. So we sat in the clubhouse and watched the game. Because we didn't know whether we were going to New York, having to come back home for the one-game playoff, we didn't know what to do, and it just—it was a strange, it was a strange thing to have your season, the regular season over, but still sitting there and just and not knowing where you're going to yeah. end up. A couple hours. I'm trying. It seemed that it was quite a while. Yeah, it seemed an hour and a half, two hours of a wait. I know we ended up getting back home late because of that, before we had to play the next afternoon in the Kingdom, but. It's it's 
Those guys are sitting there wondering, and I'm, and I'm sure right now they're hoping that they don't have to go to Arlington. Two, two here to smoke. Breaking ball. Off the plate. Full count. On deck, Michael Saunders. Smoke. Gray's got a 3 2 pitch. Oh, ball four. An update from Arlington. The Rangers have to win. And here's Ian Kinsler. And he goes base hit left field. And that puts the Rangers up 4 2, bottom seven. They hang on to win. They'll take on. They'll host the Tampa Bay Rays, and the winner then will move on to Cleveland. There's Michael Saunders. Strike one. And Sonny Gray lost three of the last four men that he's faced. His command hasn't been great either. 61 pitches, 38 strikes, 25 balls for him. First pitch strikes to eight of the 16 batters that he has faced. We saw him earlier in the year, and he, he definitely was sharper. With seven innings, gave up two hard runs against the Mariners. I was back in Oakland on uh, the 20th of August, the one two here to Saunders. Saunders grounded out the short of the 3 2 pitch in the second. Houston. The Yankees and the Astros closing it out. Yankee pitching struck out 19 Astros. And that establishes a new mark for most strikeouts by a ball club, 1,535. Did you notice that Andy Pettit yesterday, his last start as a major league, he's retiring at the end of the year? Did he win that game? Yeah, he did, went the distance. Did he? Yeah. It worked out well for him going back home. He's from that area. Strike three call. Saunders gone. Saunders strikes out. There's one out. That's a six strikeout for Gray. Mariners thank Seattle Children's for their ongoing support of the Moose Den and the Seattle Children's play field and center field. Thousands of families have come to the ballpark this season to experience and enjoy not only Mariner baseball, but these great kid friendly features found at Safeco Field. Zanino granted out the third his first time. Yeah, Andy Pettit complete game victory yesterday. He got the two outs. And Joe Girardi came out just to make sure. You okay? He says, no, I got to finish this. I got the third out. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's a good way to go out, that's for sure. Hometown guy. Yeah. Had a big ovation, big crowd down there. New era. With the pinstripers, Jeter barely hanging well, yeah, on. You talk about a lot of work to do. That that's a club that mm -hmm. they're going to have their work cut out for them too. Interesting to see what happens with Robinson Cano. Three hundred million. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Read a couple articles that are saying that he really appreciates what. Mariano Rivera, the entire career with right. the Yankees, wants to, you know, Rivera is going to be in the plaque. He's going to get the Hall of Fame, that whole thing. And Cano really thinks that's a big, valuable part of it. So maybe he'll back off the $310 million or whatever the heck it was. One of the things that I saw on that, too, that has to hurt him, good curveball by Sonny Gray, that it has to hurt him as uh, the Dodgers came out and said that they weren't interested. Wow, well, there you so go. That, that hurts. That, that market just yeah. shrunk. Yeah. 68 pitches for Sonny Gray, 41 strikes. So Jay Z and 
You know, he's with Jay Z's uh, sports uh, firm now. So I have to make some adjustment of the numbers. Two two to Zanino with a man aboard, one out. Breaking ball, strike three call. That is a good curveball. Seven keys for Sonny Gray. Last two looking, total of four. No argument, just locked him up, couldn't get a swing off. Dustin Ackley will step in. He was a strikeout victim his first time out, strikeout looking. He's got the feel for it. Yep. Has it back anyway. Lost it for a, yep. a little bit last inning when he walked a couple of batters. The middle. It's like shortstop Sogard right to the bag. Quiet inning for the Mariners. 4 0 Athletics. And I watch all my Mariners games with Root Sports on Cable One. Go Mariners! <laughs> Way to go, Josh! Well done, Josh! Oh, baby! Yeah. Very nice. That's well done. Yeah. My weeks to lead <laughs> it off here. Very, very poised. That one fouled off. It'll be Weeks, Moss, and Kias, both three, four, and five here in the fifth inning. And we want to say hello to uh, Matt, Josh's brother, who's watching the game today. Weeks, the base hit, center field. Here come the A's again. For the A's, their fifth hit. Steven vote for catcher. So he's pinch hitting for Moss as Bob Melvin continues to empty his bench. Well, I think he wanted to get some of the guys in that batter to try to keep them somewhat sharp and then get them out of the game. Certainly doesn't want to get anybody hurt going into the postseason. So a lot of the guys that are on the bench are going to get a chance to get in here. Cespedes, I doubt we'll see him. No. Sore shoulder and then Lowry plays every day. Chris, those two guys, they won't get in the game. Their sake, I hope uh, whatever was it, a thigh injury for Cespedes that they can get him back.
one oh pitch here to vote. Throwing the ball well, he has good movement on his fastball, so hopefully he can get a double play ball right here. Rangers in the eighth inning, four-two lead. Bottom of the eighth, must-win game. Adrian Beltre with a home run, make it 5 2 Texas, and pitch backs off vote. Hamstring must be feeling okay. It looked like he was limping a little bit when we showed him scoring earlier. He just crushed one to center field. Three one to vote. Weeks at first. He runs. No, he doesn't. He holds up. And ball four. Let's check in with Angie Mintic. Guys, you know, they say at this level of baseball, there is no off season. Well, it's actually the same story in broadcasting as well. Mariners season might be over, but Root Sports also your home for high school football. The game of the week is presented by Papa Murphy's, and it comes your way this Thursday at 7 p.m. That's when Auburn takes on Kent Lake. Join us each Thursday for a look at some of the best teams from around the region. Guys? All right, Angie, thank you very much. Alberta Caespo, the hitter, a walk, and a pop to short. Two men aboard here, nobody out. Top of the fifth inning. Strike one. Two and one. And he had really been throwing the ball well, but this inning, all of a sudden, he's all over the place. He looked like he was aiming that last fastball, didn't turn it loose. 48 pitches, 31 strikes. That's okay. Not too bad. Let's get back down in the strike zone. Two one. Oh, off his glove in the center field. Weeks is going to score. Vote to third, five, nothing. What a bullet. An RBI for Kai Espo was 58th. Pitch up in the middle of the plate. He almost caught that. In the play. Yep, right off the top of his glove. I thought maybe Nick Franklin was going to catch it on the deflection, but it goes over his head. Carl Willis worn out a path this afternoon out to the mound. Bobby Lafron Boyce going to get loose in the pen. I'm sure part of that conversation is stay aggressive, get after him. That's why he was having success. Oakland now three for eight with runners in scoring position. They're having a good day in that respect. I'll say here's Josh Reddick strikeout ground out to second. Nobody out. Runners at the corner. Oh, that ball's hit hard right field. Scoring his vote. Kiaspo motoring. It'll stop at third and RBI double. For Josh Reddick. And this is a hanging breaking ball, middle of the plate, 87 miles an hour. Too many pitches in the middle of the plate this inning for Hector.
bring up Derek Norris. Norris, 0 for 1 in the game. He had a walk in the second inning and scored a run. Grounded out to third his last time up. Hector now at 50 pitches. And his splits are good. 33 strikes. First pitch strikes to 12 of the 14 batters that he's faced. One one. Derek Norris. And a walk so far for Hector. He's already given up a couple of runs in the inning. Hasn't recorded an out yet. But he's ahead of Norris. Maybe a good hard slider, see if we can get him to chase something off the plate. Another home run for the Texas Rangers. They're pouring it on now. Better pitch from Hector. It looked like he tried to throw it off the plate. At least he kept it down and it was on the corner. Norris barely getting a piece of it. Well, that's good news for the Rangers. Yep. Again, I, I hope that they win. Giovanni this, Soto just went deep. I just want to see the game. That's going to be a great game, man. Yeah. One and two to Norris. Couple of men aboard scoring position. Swings and misses. First out of the inning. For Noesi is second strikeout. What an inning. Base hit, walk, RBI, single, RBI, double. Gonna do it, Eric Wedge. Coming out to get Noesi, Derek Barton, the hitter. It's all open, 6 0. Being brought to you by BNSF Railway, the engine that connects us. By Jack in a Box, go big at participating Jack in a Box with Jack's really big chicken sandwich combos for only $3.99 plus tax. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Well, a long day for the Mariners right now. Six nothing in the hole. Offense hasn't done much against Sonny Gray. And right now, Bobby Lafram Boyce, they bring him on to try to put out a big fire. And he's going to get a couple of left handers. Derek Barton is due up, and then it's Eric Sogard, the shortstop, number nine hitter, two lefties. So Eric Wedge making the change to go to Bobby. Bobby on the year, just nine games pitched for him, a 7 8 8 ERA. He's pitching the eight innings, eight strikeouts. Hasn't given up a home run this year, so. 
He's going to try to get the Mariners out of this inning if he can. Tough situation though. Second Ooh. and third with just one out and the A's have already scored two runs in the inning. And they're four for ten with runners in scoring position this afternoon. Derek Barton will be his first hitter. Barton a walk and a ground out a comebacker to the pitcher. Mariners have their infield in. Four runs in the second, two more here in the fifth. For the Athletics, two time defending champions in the American League West. Side of things, Sonny Gray has struck out seven, walked three, holding the Mariners to new runs on three hits. All two strikes. Go to the top of the ninth and bringing in Joe Nathan, 6 2 lead for the Rangers. And a must have win. One and two. Breaking ball. Foul. After a couple of breaking balls, Bobby Lafron Boyce has a lot of options here. He could try to throw another slider off the plate. Or maybe bust him in with a fastball because that slider, after seeing two in a row, Barton has that in the back of his mind. He might be a little late on the heater. He can get it in on his hands. Barton, the six men to the plate here in the fifth inning. By Mariner pitching. Last three have scored. One, two. Sonny Gray, he's walked three Mariners, so there's been quite a few walks in this ball game. What else? Sonny was able to get back on track. Something Ramirez was not able to do. He started this game for the Mariners, and he just went an inning and a third, gave up four earned runs. Two two pitch. Martin pacing around. He knew he had a pitch that he could get into the outfield and elevate a fastball out over the plate, and he missed it. As a hitter in this situation, second and third with just one out, you want to hit a fly ball if you can. And he had a pitch to do that and missed it. So hopefully Bobby can make a better pitch here and put him away. Runners at second and third. Two two pitch. Broken bad loop bird. That's going to drop in. And they're going to wave. Reddick and he's going to score two more runs on the board. This is now a four run fifth. Eight nothing. Athletics two RBIs for Barton. He's got 16 since his recent call up. Fan pulse. Keep voting until the end of this ball game. Right now, the Sox. 12 point lead over the Athletics. And I think we're all in agreement on that Detroit Bolt that love their hitting. And Cabrera's got to be healthy. If all our starters can go eight and then you can get it to Ben Juan the ninth, you got a chance. But if you go five, six, seven. And the thing about that, though, is, is their starters can actually do that. Right. Scherzer, Verlander, Sanchez, Sanchez it's a good Doug group. Fister, yeah. See their record at home. 21 games over, 500 at home. 
impressive. They're so good. What we do know too is they can put a bunch of runs on the Ooh. scoreboard hey. to help their bullpen out. Yeah, hey, hey, that that typically it. changes in the postseason though because everybody's sure. throwing their best pitching at you. But Absolutely. Some really good hitters. Be interesting to see if they decide if the Tigers decide to put Peralta in left field. How that's going. I know Jim Lela was going to play him out there at the end of the season. Two strikes, you got one out, couple of runs in. So guard 0 for 2. Strike 3 gone, so guard can't believe it. Much needed out for the Mariners. Two down here in the fifth. Second strike out for a lot from boys. Back to the top of the order. And it's going to be Michael Choice who came in for Chris Young. With the Rangers moving into the ninth inning. I would assume the Rays are on their way through customs. They're up in Toronto. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> you know, they couldn't be further away. <laughs> Here's a ball driven deep to right center field. The Condor is on the case and he makes the play. Needed it. Long out. Two more runs. Leads expanded to 8 0. The game. Sonny Gray, Mike, has been really good. He had a little hiccup. He walked three men in a four, three out of four in one stint, but other than that, he's been on top. Well, that's absolutely right. You can see him dot that fastball on the outside corner, but the pitch has been that one, his curveball. Mariners are certainly aware of that. They faced him earlier this year, and that's the reason why he's been so effective. Again, he came into the game with a 2.90 ERA, and outside of that little stretch where he was having a tough time finding it, Mariners weren't able to take advantage of it. It looks like he's back on track. The only guy to solve Sonny Gray thus far is this man right here, Brad Miller. A couple of singles to center, two for two. Well, Brad typically is going to be aggressive, and he's jumped on some fastballs early in the count. Hasn't let Sonny get to his curveball. Probably a good idea, a good game plan. Top of the order, Miller, Franklin, and Seeger. Right now, 74 pitches, nobody throwing in the Athletics bullpen. I wasn't sure how far Bob Melvin would go with him if he's getting him ready for the postseason, but it looks 
like he's going to throw his typical 90 to 100. Found back by Brett. Two and two. Three hits for the Mariners. Brad Miller's got two. The other hit by Kyle Seeger. Part of the two hit first inning. Mariners had runners in first and second. One out. Could not score. Yeah. Strike three call. Wow. Eighth strikeout for Sonny Gray. He is on. It's copyrighted telecast. It's presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Eight strikeouts for Sonny Gray. There's Nick Franklin, kid looking and swinging. Round ball the weeks. Quick two outs. Seager Kyle one for one had a base hit in the first also walked in the third he was one of the two walks that Sonny Gray had in that inning. No runs three hits. Eight strikeouts three walks for Sonny Gray. Bouncing ball weeks. Eight pitches in this inning. The Mariners are gone. We're going to have some highlights of the Texas ball game and what happened with the Rangers when we come back. Is what happened with the Rangers? Here we go, top of the ninth. Angels down six to two, two outs. Joe Nathan, the closer on the mound. Cole Calhoun, the hitter. Fly ball center field. This game is over. And the Rangers will play another day. Adrian Beltre with his 30th home run. And they will take on the Tampa Bay Rays. And we're Look at that 91 and 71 for both of them and we're both happy for Ron Washington. I've been lucky enough in my career to meet a lot of guys in a lot of sports. One of my favorites. There you go. Tampa Bay at Texas. The winner plays Cleveland. And a wild card winner will take on the Red Sox. Man, I'm thrilled for Wash. He's you one of the best baseball guys. Yeah he was the third base coach in Oakland when I played there. So I've known Ron for a long long time. And you know the, the expectations have changed in Arlington. I think he felt some pressure. And with, especially with the way September was going for the Rangers, so second straight September. Yeah, so to at least get in there on the last day, I'm, I'm happy for him. We'll see what'll happen. 
quick turnaround for those guys and they're going to face the raise a good pitching staff but we'll see give yourself a fighting chance now yeah. so, you're in it in any sport that's all you say get in and take your chances Bobby Laugh from boys continues breaking ball misses Seth Smith tomorrow weeks Stephen vote two three four here in the sixth four has been the lucky number for the athletics today a four run second a four run fifth. Put it in play. Franklin's there. One out. Back to back. Pierce and Seth Smith grounding out the second. Came into the game for Donaldson. Donaldson walked in the first inning, and then Weeks came on the pinch run for him. He oh. is one for two with a base hit score to run. As you pointed out, Donaldson is taken care of by his manager with that walk, kept his batting average at 3 and 1, and that's how he'll finish the 162. That's something that the coaches usually will go to the manager when you get down to the last couple of days on some of these things whether it's a milestone or where guys are at just so that the manager is aware and if you're in a situation where you can take care of them they'll do that really good season for Donaldson there's a great story about Ted Williams when he hit last minute hit 400 could have sat out and went out with something like four for eight or something yeah. ridiculous a double header, <laughs> a double header. <laughs> It's a great 1941. Put two here to Weeks to switch hitter. And Zanino holds on to that. Up from Boyce with a strikeout. That'll be his second. Big plans. Be part of the 2014 action here at Safeco Field with a season ticket plan that meets your needs. Full season, half season, or 16 game plan as Mariner season ticket holder. You're going to get access to the best seats at the best price, exclusive events, and VIP service. For more info on what benefits await you as a Mariner season ticket holder, log on to mariners.com slash season tickets. Stephen Vogt, he's going to step in. He Came into the game. Brandon Moss had started as the DH. A couple of at bats. Bob Melvin again taking him out of the game, getting him ready for the postseason. So Bo will take over as the DH. 17,081. Strikes.
by Puget Sound Acura dealers. Visit your Puget Sound Acura dealers to test drive the extremely new MDX. Final game of the 162 here for the Mariners. It has not been a pleasant Sunday to this point. Eight nothing. Athletics two in the fourth. Make that four in the second and four in the fifth. Run down a whole bunch of changes here, Mike. Yeah, pitching change. Jesse Chavez is going to take over on the mound. So Sonny Gray day, his day is finished. Pitched well, only five innings, giving up three hits. No runs. But for Chavez, 34 appearances on the year, 399 ERA for him, 53 strikeouts, 20 walks. Opponent hitting 234. He has given up three home runs this year. Morales the hitter. We'll run down as best we can the multiple changes, Bob. Melvin emptying his bench. Morales 101. Just taking his veterans out. Don't no blame him. No. Eight nothing final game. You're going to the playoffs. Norris is at first. Weeks moves to center field from second base. Choice is in right field. It's outside. Let's see what else you got. Choice weeks. Sogard's at second. And at short. Andy Perino. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. As Morales strikes out, Suzuki holds on. Is running out of time here trying to get this 30th home run become the uh, most prolific 41 year old home run hitter in baseball history. Intrepid producer. Running fastball. His fastball will be 92 to 94 miles an hour. Also mix in a slider. And he'll try to get as many ground ball outs as he can. Sink it away from the lefties. 2-0 to Raul. Jesse Chavez. He's ahead of Raul. Big, slow, sweeping curve. Left hander Pedro Figueroa getting loose in the Athletics bullpen. One of the September call ups for them. Three and two. Slider on the outside corner, right at the knees. No argument for Rome. Good pitch. Bring up Justin Smoke. Justin, 0 for 1, had a strikeout swing, and he walked in the fourth. There is without any opportunities in this one as far as runners in scoring position. They're 0 for 3. Runner in scoring position. Almost back. Well, he had one in the first, and same in the third. That's been it. Shift on for smoke.
Two and one. Center field, Weeks, long run near the track, on the track, makes the catch. One, two, three, go the Mariners in the sixth. Oakland leads, eight nothing. The Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. 8 0 A's in the final game of the 2013 season. Derek Barton greeted Bobby Lafram Boyce back in the fifth with a two run single. Since then, Bobby has retired the last four men that he's faced. Here in the top of the seventh, he will get Cayespo, Reddick, and Norris. Actually, Reddick is out of the game now with all the changes that have been going on. We'll run them down for your last five men that he's faced. So here we go. It will be Kai Espo to lead off. Kai Espo, a walk, a pop up, an RBI single, one scored. Carter Caps. He's going to make his final appearance of the year. Thing about the end of the season, you can start speculating about a lot of things. One would be who's going to be the next manager of the Washington Nationals. It's Davey Johnson's going to be hanging them up. Fly ball center field. Come on, coming on exactly. Some speculation that maybe Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah. Chance seen that a while ago. He has, he has expressed very strong interest. Andy Perino will step in at his first at bat of the afternoon. Batting in the six hole, vacated by Josh Reddick. Only 32 at bats for him on the season. It has been a struggle though. He has just three hits. Going back is Miller. That's the play. And here comes Derek Norris. Walk run score to grant out the strikeout.
one of one to Norse. Here comes Ackley. And one, two, three, seventh for the athletics. And we'll keep it right here for God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you now to please rise and join us in honoring our great country with the singing of God Bless America. Please welcome John B. Cooper. God bless America. And that I love stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with fall. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Lottery. Last year, Washington's lottery turned 28.6 million Washingtonians into winning heirs. They can do the same for you. Thanks to Washington's lottery, winning heirs are made daily. Oh, find the time we're here, Louie Louie, here in the 2013 season. Mariners down 8 0. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew. Big thank you weekend to the Mariner fans. 17,081 on hand here today. Pedro Figueroa will take over for the Athletics. Left hander. September call up. Hasn't pitched much. Just two and a third innings for him. And it hasn't gone well. You can see that ERA. So. He's given up a couple of home runs. Long arm, long leg slinger. Good fastball. 97 miles an hour on that fastball. Sunder, Zanino, and Ackley, bottom third of the order. One to Michael. He called third strike his last time up. First time he grounded out the short. Triple A. Left hander said 216 against Figueroa. Nice aggressive play by the first baseman Norris. One out. 
Make safe go field your home for the holidays as you plan your seasonal corporate event. This unique venue allows you to customize your menu, event space, and even invite the Mariner Moose. For more information or to book your holiday party at safe go field, visit mariners.com slash events. Mike Zanino 0 for 2 today. Ground out to third and a strikeout looking. Figueroa 3 and 4. 4.10 ERA, 46 games, Triple A Sacramento. Well hit, left field, hooking foul. Carter Caps. He was up last inning, so still getting loose. Looks like he will pitch the top of the eight. Sure, two and two. We said it best too. He swings it up there. Is a foul ball. Figueroa, six foot two fourteen, twenty seven years old, out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Drafted free agent signee in November 2003. Boy, he's been banging around for a while. Big league debut last year. Off the end of the bat, second baseman throws him out, and here's Angie Menton. Guys, last night, right after the Mariners uh, beat up on the A's, uh, we watch Montana and NAU go at it. Montana actually upset in that game by Northern Arizona. They're going to have to rebound this week here on Root Sports, your home for Big Sky football, by taking on the Portland State Vikings. Kickoff uh, against the Montana Grizzlies, 1230 Pacific, 130 Mountain. So make sure you're here for all your college football action only on Root Sports, presented by your local Ford stores. Guys? Great job, Angie. Thank you very much. Second baseman is Eric Sogard. Two down. Dustin Ackley behind 0 and 1. Line drive left field for a base hit. Just the fourth Mariner hit first since the Brad Miller third inning single. Out the four hits, Brad Miller has two of them, and Brad is going to step in. Bob Melvin. Donald Supermo. A lot of the success for Dustin in the second half, hitting the ball up the middle the other way. Solid line drive into left field. <laughs> Bob Melvin going to give everybody a chance to get the box score today. 8 0 Athletics.
for the athletics. Carter Caps continues to throw in the pen for the Mariners, so he'll pitch the top of the eighth inning. Number four, Otero, a 1 4 ERA. He's pitched well, 38 2 thirds, 27 strikeouts, only six walks for him. 3 0 to Brad Miller. How about this? 5.07 Pacific time tomorrow. David Price against Martin Perez. Couple of left handers. That'll be a good one. Tampa Bay and Texas. Rick Franklin on deck. Terry Francona going to go with Danny Salazar, rookie to start there. How about that. Twenty-three-year-old with less than three months in the bigs. We haven't seen him, have we? I don't believe so. I think he was around when he at the Indians. I tried to forget that trip, if you know what I mean. I certainly do. <laughs> Fly ball left field, three walk-offs in Cleveland. A wraparound weekend series, eight nothing A's. Montana, and I watch all my Seattle Mariners games on Root Sports with Charter Communications. Go Mariners! All right, Amber, thank you very much. Good well to done. have you on with us. That was well done. Carter Caps is going to take over for the Mariners. Hard throwing right hander, his final appearance of the year. Carter will work an inning, maybe two. 52 appearances for Carter this year, 66 strikeouts over the 58 innings that he has pitched. Carter will have some things to work on over the course of the winter. Most Importantly, what he needs to get some left handers out. That's been a problem for him this year. Dominant fastball at times. The other night he was throwing 99 miles an hour. Let's see what he looks like when he comes to spring training. Great arm. First hitter, Kurt Suzuki. It's a good story for Oakland. Suzuki left, was with the Nationals, and now he's back with them. I don't think I can remember seeing a ball get by him. Certainly not many. You know, he's always been one of the best defensive catchers. Let's see what he's done in 14 games. Played well, 313 average with a couple of home runs.
1 0 pitch. Way upstairs. Tell you this, Dave, and nobody wants to see that when you're hitting on the last day of the season. No way. This is from Carter. He throws 95 to 100. Three and one. Eric Silgard's on deck. Drifting back. That's the play. One out here in the eighth. Stay in touch with your Seattle Mariners throughout the offseason. The latest team news, special offers and events, and much more at Mariners.com. Also follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Mariners or on Twitter via at Mariners. <laughs> Big buck of popcorn. It sure is. And it's all his. Eric Sogardo for three. Right here, handles. Two down. Michael Choice, his second time. Coming up, Ryan Cook. Warming up for the home eighth. On the outside corner, 96. One on one to choice, flat out the right. Over center field for Chris Young. Then moved over to right field. Brett Miller charges. Makes the play, and that'll do it. One, two, three, go to the A's in the eighth. Franklin Seeger Morales. Forthcoming, they'll have to face Ryan Cook. All of my Mariners games on Root Sports, Beaver Creek Telephone.
the ultimate Northwest fan from Oregon. I watch all of my Mariners games on Root Sports, Beaver Creek Telephone. Go Mariners. Gary, thank you, sir. Ryan Cook takes over. Pitch here in the home eighth. Been all athletics. Four runs in the second, four runs in the fifth. Mariners held to four hits. Well, Ryan Cook, 70 appearances on the air. He's pitched a lot, and it pitched well. 2.58 ERA for him. Opponents hitting just 240. He's only given up two home runs over 66 in the third innings this year. 67 strikeouts. For him. Brings up Nick Franklin. Strikeout looking, swinging, and a ground out to second. It, Mike, the some of the guys who were suspended in the PED mm -hmm. was it the biogenesis operation this year. They become eligible for the playoffs. Right. Tomorrow is considered a regular season game. Regular That's season right. game. So Nelson Cruz won't be available to the Rangers yet. If they win tomorrow, then he's good to go for the playoffs. Detroit's not involved in that extra game, so Peralta will be good to go. Right. Peralta's been per playing. He, yeah, he's been playing this weekend. And yeah. I heard Leland talking about him playing that field, which will be interesting to see how he does out there. Did you see? Him? I I don't remember seeing him play left field. Had, had he? I had, we had not seen him play left field. He's always been shortstop. I think a few times at third. But when we were in Detroit watching the Tigers play the Mariners, he was working out daily in the outfield uh, to get to get his feet wet out there. So. And then Leland said in these last three games that he was going to be eligible to play, that he would play left field. And he, he was swinging a very good bat for uh, the suspension. Be glad that's just one more piece to add to their arsenal. Seeger with a base hit, the right, a walk, and a ground out. Two sixty one. Tom Wilhelmson now getting loose. Tom will pitch the top of the ninth inning. Finish up his season. It's a good inning for Carter Caps. One, two, three inning for Carter. Go into the winter feeling good about that. Is a fair ball. Nars will take it. One out down the second goes Franklin. Kendrys Morales over two. He walked in the third. Talking about all the things for the Mariners. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Kendrys. Cool. I'll see. Get to him. Yeah, a couple of off-speed pitches to Kendrys out front. He knows that Cook has a good fastball. His fastball 95 or better. Up the middle. Shortstop Perino. Route number two. Well, here's his last chance. Yeah. I guess you can hope that Cook will give him something to hit, and then he'll take care of his end of the deal. Hit it in the seats right here. Raul again, 29 home runs. 
Most home runs by a 41 year old tied with Ted Williams. One of the real great guys standing ovation by many of these fans here. I'm standing in the booth. We all stand here. I mean the guys. This guy's great. What a good guy. You know, hopefully this is not his last Mariner at bat. Maybe hopefully he comes back next year. Get number 30. Oof. My first pitch change up in the middle of the plate. Fields misses there, and that will do it. Go to the ninth, eight nothing. Athletics. From Washington, and I watch all my Seattle Mariners games on Root Sports with Comcast Cable. Go Mariners! Great job, Becca. Good for you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being an ultimate Mariner fan. Abraham Almonte going out to left field. They're going to take Raul out of the game. I'm sure he will get another standing ovation. All the teammates are on the front step. Big ovation for Raul. Good man. Yeah. Good man. Class, 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 class act. Big time Wilhelmson's on now. I hope he's back next year. Yeah, same here. Fun. It's spring training. Just watching uh, the younger guys talk to them, just the awe, their eyes are like wide open yeah. as saucers, right? Well, if you're going to go all the way back to spring training, I can remember getting over to the ballpark in the mornings and he's walking out of the clubhouse with Kyle Seeger going to the cages. There you go. One, two to set Smith. Times in the second, four times in the fifth. Their pitching staff has held the Mariners to no runs on four hits. It's not going to get any easier. Their closer, Grant Balfour, going to get an inning's worth of work. 
himself sharp for the postseason. Two with two. The medal into center field of base hit. For Tom, 58 appearances on the year, ERA just over four, 44 strikeouts. In the 58 innings that he has worked, opponents hitting just 209 against him. Jamile Weeks will step in. Jamile one for three this afternoon scored a run. Well, the fans here making themselves heard here in the ninth inning. A runner on. Strike one to Weeks. Scored, struck out a couple of times. Big swing and a miss. One out here in the ninth. Seattle Mariners baseball here on Root Sports. Being brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Sterling Bank, nobody works harder for you. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Good swing and miss by Stephen Vogt. Good fastball from Tom at 96. Six months makes Tom command presence. Yeah, everything. We talked about it earlier. I, I still believe it. It started in that Cleveland oh, series. No a lot doubt. of things did yeah. for the Mariners that yeah. weren't good, and That's right. that was Tom's first blown save. And it just seemed that things affected him after that. But he has such a great arm as it spikes that fastball, and that's one of the things you're talking about. That's a fastball that he just spiked into the dirt at 97 miles an hour. But you, the hope is, is that he can get it back together. He still has the great arm. His stuff is the same, the, just as you mentioned, Dave. The command hasn't been. And you hope that over the course of the winter, he can get things figured out. Boy, hey, figure for back two thirds of last year and the first what month and change of this season, he was good as anybody. He was, especially the first month and change of this year. He, you couldn't hit him. Going back is Miller taking charge, runs it down. Just gives you a real good idea of just what a fine line this game is and between having success and struggling. It's a good running catch by Brad Jones and Rain going out to left. Bring up Alberto Cayespo. Cayespo, he is one for three, had a base hit, scored a run. Also driven in a run today. Ball one, fastball outside. So we'll have baseball tomorrow. Tampa Bay at Texas. Inside the second wild card team. Two and zero.
Well, Oakland was its second four run inning in the fifth. Our fan pulse. A lot of people said, oops, never mind, Red Sox. Let me go with these guys. The so Red Sox had a, what, a 12 point lead. First time we showed the results. Boy, he is struggling. I'll tell you this, I'm, I'm done picking against the, the Oakland A's. They. You know what? That's sound thinking, right? We've been burned big time. Yeah, over the last few years, and Bob Melton's done a great job with that club and managing a whole cast of characters that he has. But they they come to play for him and they play hard. And here they go again into the postseason. Play with a lot of swagger, good pitching staff, good bullpen. Wow, all four. First and second. Two outs. Reno, and shortstop will step in. Popped out. Shortstop his first time. Scores. Tiaspo, he held it third. RBI double Perino, 9 0 Oakland. Perino picks up an RBI his first of the season. And for Perino, it's his second double. Double came on a hanging changeup. Tom left it up out over the plate. Tom, too, is he was so quick through innings 10, 11, 12 pitches, and now with his struggles, and it's been because of his command, he's typically having to throw a lot of pitches. This will be the 25th pitch of the inning for him. Ackley tracking, makes a catch, home ninth coming up. He's had another run. 9 0 Athletics last half inning for the Mariners here in 2013. They'll have to face Grant Balfour.
see Raul tip his cap 9 nothing athletics. And Mike, I know you joined me in thanking all the ladies and gentlemen who worked on our great crew. Mark Engelberg, yes. our director, Curtis Wilson, the producer, the great camera people, the tape ops, the camera people, Polly and uh, doing the stats on the board, everybody. As always, for me, a pleasure to work with you folks. Look forward to doing it again Thanks next year. Yeah. Hopefully Thanks to everybody. With, hopefully with much better results on the field. Yeah, here, here on that too. You guys do a great job out there. Dedicated professionals. A lot of good people too. I'm sure, I'll run into several during the course of the forthcoming for me NFL season. Base hit. Smoke. Starts the ninth against Grant Balfour. You know Balfour with a nine nothing lead is going to do nothing but throw strikes. Yeah, he's just getting some work and trying to keep him sharp. Scott A. Scott next A. door. JR doing tower duty, my man. I like those shots up there, pal. <laughs> Trying to stay dry anyway. Gary and Bubba doing the audio. Bubba just back from yet another trip to Texas on college football. And Robbie Nielsen here next to us, our right hand man. Stage manager, Chris Taylor doing stats. Got a great booth. As difficult as the season has been and is, the part you're going to miss is the camaraderie. Working with Mike and all the guys here in the booth, working with the guys over in radio, Kevin Kremen, Rick Riz, Aaron Goldsmith, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Wilson. Good to see you. Great work. He does all the McDonald's Super Bowl. Sounders behind 0 and 2. Eric Jones, there's Eric. Hey, Derek. There you go, man. Thank you. Good working with you again, as always. And Derek handles that robotic camera out there. And the one here in the booth. So we got you covered there in baseball. Let's hope and wish. Keep your fingers and toes crossed for a big turnaround next year. Great guys out, gals out in the truck, get you to replays and everything. And it's been it's been my fortune. <laughs> hey, there we go. Been my fortune. To, what our seventh year here seventh together. Seventh year, yes sir. Where'd that go? <laughs> Goes fast. <laughs> I tried to tell you that. Man, oh man. Seven years? You kidding me? There's Brad Adam. Brad Brad uh, building up building up his Facebook Facebook page. The Valley Bill Kruger, Angie. Hopefully Brad doesn't hurt himself out there. It's <laughs> in <Jen> Mueller. Oh <laughs> and two here. Nick, hey Nick, great <laughs> work. Ange, come on. I know. Right. You guys got the hardest job here, making me look good. <laughs> there you go, Nick. Hey. Got Tom Glasgow. Got a lot of good yeah. people, man. Pleasure to work here. Looking forward to year eight again with a big turnaround on the field. Whomever that manager may be, there's one. Well, they won't get two. Brings up Mike Zanino, one out, one on. Thank uh, Jay Buner and Dan Wilson. Yeah. They okay, helped us out quite a bit this year. Yeah. Dave Valley. Bill Kruger is up here once or yeah. twice. 
And of course, our executive producer, the big guy himself, Jim uh, John Bradford. He stopped by here about two days ago, and yeah. he said to say hello, and then he left. I don't see him again. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good to see you. You good? Yeah. All right, stick around. I'll say hello. Hey. He's gone. He was out of here. Like it did a Regis Philbin <laughs> appearance. And David, to you, thank you again. Appreciate hey, it. Absolutely. Yeah, Enjoy thanks it, for everything. Really. Safe travels. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Taking off to cover the NFL once again, so you're going to be traveling around the country. I will not be. It's only once a week, baby. I know. Be careful <laughs> out there, though. Be safe. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to first game. Seahawks at the Colts. That's Westwood right. One Radio nationally next week. Got Lee Collette in audio. And Eric Wedge, one out away from his Mariner tenure being over. Enjoyed working with Eric over these last, yep. what, three years? So I had to end the way it did. Well, I had a chance to go down and thank him. Yeah. And the coaching staff, you know, you don't know what's going to yeah, happen. Those guys, a lot of good people, like Brumley, Darren Brown, Dave Hanson, Jeff Datz, Robbie Thompson. I'm leaving somebody. Who Carl, Willis, hey, Carl Willis, Jamie Navarro, and Jamie Navarro. Yep. It's a good group of guys that have been traveling with them the last three years. Oh, and two to Ackley. Field towards the corner. Smith is going to put it away, and the 2013 Mariner season is in the books. A nine-nothing whitewash by the Oakland Athletics, the two-time division champions, and we wish them luck as they move forward in the playoffs. Well, and I think the other thing that we all are aware of: a lot of work going to happen, and it's going to start with whoever the new manager is going to be. So Jack Zarenzik and his crew—they have a lot of work ahead of them, but we'll keep a close eye on that. See what happens. And David, looking forward to spring training. Yes, indeed. Hey, you know what? It'll be here soon. Yeah, it will. It always <laughs> is. It always is. <laughs> It'll be here soon, Mike. Best to you and the family. Thank you. And uh, hey, keep growing them boys, huh? That's it. Well, they'll do that on their own. They'll do that on their own. Safe travels to you and Abby. Appreciate that. Thank you. And it sort of sums up the way things have gone here for Eric Wedge. He's going to grab and make his exit. All the best to him and Kate yes, and his family. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Good man. All right. For the final time here, 2013, Brad and Bill, it's been a pleasure, boys. This was not a pleasant outcome or season, but a pleasure working with you fellas. Look forward to next year. All the best. Godspeed. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. We echo that.